All right, guys, I just got home from work today. We're gonna do some work on this frame. Now, the other day we got the thing power washed and we used a degreaser and kind of scrubbed it down a little bit. Uh, I kind of want to show you the condition of it and kind of what we're gonna do. So let's take a look. As you can see, it is clearly a lot cleaner. It actually had maybe a quarter of an inch of dirt just sitting on top of the frame. And of course the dirt that's on there too is some powdery sand dirt that's just cakes on and stays on unless you scrub it off. Now after power washing, the frame looks great. There is a little bit of surface rust in certain areas, especially back here in the back where rocks and dirt hits constantly. It kind of chips it away a little bit and has surface rust, but none of it is actually through the metal. So you can see across this back cross member here that there is a little bit of surface rust showing through there. So after degreasing the whole thing, I actually took a wire brush to it and kind of scrubbed it down a little bit. And then also took a little sanding block to it as well. The plan is going to be to actually use a rust encapsulator spray on this after, of course, taking the sanding block and wire brush to it to knock off anything loose. I'll use a degreaser before actually spraying it as well to knock any other dirt that's off of it. So once I've sprayed the whole thing down with that rust encapsulator, I am going to use an enamel black paint on this. And then I'll actually also do it clear enamel paint as well over the top just for an extra layer of protection on it. I am actually going to wait to do the front part of the frame here once I've pulled the engine. That way I'm not just doing touch-ups. I think this will save me a little bit of time. So once I pull the engine out, I'll bring it back outside and spray it down and degrease it again. And do the front part of the frame like I am the back. Well, it's already starting to get dark. Sadly, I only have a few hours to actually work on this whenever I get home from work. This is probably going to take me a few days after getting home from work. So I'll probably just see y'all when this is done. So it actually only took me one more day to get the back part of this frame done. Let's check it out. Now on the back portion here, we do have the encapsulator sprayed. We then put an enamel black coat and then we have actually a clear enamel over the top just for a little bit of extra protection. Work on pulling a little bit of the engine stuff off today and then tomorrow I am going to get to pulling the engine, then pulling it back out and getting the front part of this frame done. All right, we got the frame in the shop now. I have already taken apart the hoses and actually capped all those off. I did already take the radiator out and the fan shroud as well. Now we need to work on getting the motor mounts and the transmission mounts loose. I went ahead and took the nuts completely off of the cross member bolts. So the transmission transfer case there is really just resting now on that cross member. I did actually take off the exhaust manifold on this side just to make it easier to actually get to the engine mount bolts inside there. We have two hoist systems up top here. One is a larger, heavier duty hoist and one's a little bit smaller. Now I have the small hoist attached behind the transmission and in front of the transfer case where it basically bolted up to the transmission cross member there. I do have a load balancer on the engine. It's not really necessary when using two hoists like this because you're able to balance the load on how much you're lifting in the front or the back. But I want to see how well this works before I use it on the new engine to install it.
All right, we got that sprayed down and degreased. We actually have a storm rolling in now. So I went ahead and put this in the shop. I'm going to hit any of the rust spots on the front of the frame there, hit it with that rust encapsulator spray as well and get it painted up like I did the back end. I will see y'all whenever it is ready to get this new engine in here. Welcome back. It is the day that we get this new engine into the frame and mounted up. But before we do that, let's take a look at the frame now that it's cleaned and painted. All right, we now have the front part of the frame painted as well as the back. So luckily I was able to find online Tin Man Fabrications had a transmission cross member and engine mount adapters for this conversion for a Humvee to a Duramax swap. You will just utilize the same Humvee engine mounts that are in place already on the frame. It uses the old Humvee rubber isolator mounts for the engine as well. And these adapters just basically bolt directly to that and bolt up to the engine. So we have the transmission cross member in place just loosely mounted so that we can actually get it lined up just right whenever we do put the transmission in. I already have the rubber isolator mounts put on the engine mount adapters. I basically did this because it seems like it's going to be easier whenever I'm dropping this engine in just to slide those two bolts through the holes in the mounts here and it should just set down in basically easier than trying to put bolts through the holes and line them up while it's hanging up there so the new engine is a 6.6 .6 duramax turbo diesel i went ahead and when i got this it was out of a wrecked truck i pulled the heads off just to check the pistons and rings and everything i went ahead and also upgraded to head studs I do have a new turbo to go in this as well, but I'm going to wait till it's in the frame and I'll do that in a new episode also. I have also upgraded a little bit of the fuel system on this. So I have gone through the wire room and actually removed a few wires that aren't needed anymore with this type of swap. I went ahead and wrapped it with a higher heat standard loom as well. we now have the transmission now made it back up to the engine everything actually lined up just right and bolted up just fine now when bolting up the new engine mount on this driver's side of the engine it does actually move forward a little bit from the factory engine mount that was in the truck that this engine originally came out of 
There are already two bolt hole locations there. I went ahead and ran a tap just to clean them out so that the bolt would have no problem going in. Now looking from the front, you'll notice that the engine actually sits off to the side just a little bit. And that's mainly just so that the front drive shaft can actually run through there. This is the original fan that came on this engine, but as you can see here, it is actually hitting the frame a little bit. So I am going to have to either get a new fan to put on this clutch assembly or look into an electric fan setup possibly. I haven't decided yet, but when it gets that time, we'll look at that. Now you might have noticed from the video of installing this engine and transmission that we actually had to switch the frame around to put the transmission in towards the back. That was honestly really just because I don't have a cherry picker and I'm not able to slide the transmission in from the side because I'm using that hoist setup that is just a tracked system front and back. This project has come a long way and we still have a long way to go on it. Having this engine and transmission mounted up just makes everything that much more real on this. If y'all like this content, please hit that like button. If you wanna see the videos as they come out, hit the subscribe button. I appreciate y'all watching guys. And as always, I'll see y'all next time.